Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about my thoughts on a Temple remake. A remake of Temple of Elemental Evil with things I would like to do that either I ran out of time to do or wish I had done differently. Um, I've already talked about my thoughts on a Fallout remake. That was months ago. And an Arcanum remake yesterday. So I thought I'd do a Temple remake. I'll link those other remakes below. I'm not going to do a remake video for Vampire Bloodlines, though. It's not really mine to remake. Thoughts from the about a remake on that should come from Leonard Borarski or Jason Anderson. So I'm just going to complete my trio of remake thoughts with Temple today. So let's get started. I... The first thing I do, just the standard, I'd fix all the bugs that are in um, Temple, and there's a lot of them. I believe we we got a big chunk of them in the first couple patches, but we had we had a third patch ready to go out um, that basically we were told we weren't allowed to release. So some of those may have made it into modders remakes i i'm sure i don't know but some other things that i always really wanted to do um with temple i'd wanted to run in a higher resolution i think it's a beautiful game and the characters are 3d it'd be really nice to get it running in a higher resolution and show off some of those beautiful maps and i would make the ui fit at the higher resolution because that UI was in pieces. It'd be easy to push it to the bottom and out to the corners. One thing I would definitely think about doing with the UI though, not a, as many people were a fan of the radio menu. And I think a big problem there was you couldn't hotkey things. And that's what I'd want to do. Like if you ever played a wizard in temple and you, you know, by the time you get up to like level seven or eight, you're getting a lot of magic missiles. And you're using a lot. And I wish I could just hotkey magic missile. So when it was my mage's turn, I could just go point magic missile. So I'd probably add hotkeys. I'm not sure how I would fit that in. Um, but I'd do it. Uh, the one thing I always wished when we made it, because the idea for the vignettes came late. I know I talked about why, in another video, I talked about why I put in party alignment. And that was to basically put in some way for the player to say, this is the general alignment of the party, so all the classes have to fit this. And it's why you don't get an assassin and a paladin in the same party. The vignettes grew out of the idea of party alignment. That I'm like, well, if we have nine different party alignments, we should have nine different ways of starting. And I love those. I love that, you know, like the lawful one was you're being told to go... I love that the Catech Neutral one was you just find a map in a dungeon. And those are super fun, but they were all really, really short. I mean, some of them were just a few minutes long. I think the longest one might have been 15 minutes. And that was just because we were massively, massively pressed for time. Party alignment vin based vignettes were not part of the original design. And if I had stuck to my guns, well, I shouldn't say that. If I had stuck to my ideals, I wouldn't have done them. But once I had the idea, I just really wanted to get them in. So what I would do is I would redo those vignettes now. I would make them longer, more in-depth, much more in tune with the idea of a party alignment. So the chaotic neutral won't be very chaotic neutral. You know, the lawful evil won't be very lawful evil, that kind of thing. I'd also put multiple solutions in them. Many of them were just nothing but dialogue or nothing but combat. And I kind of want to put different things in there. But, you know, when they're only a few minutes long, you really can't have multiple paths. For a bigger vignette, like, take the chaotic neutral one. I'd make an entire dungeon, an entire dungeon adventure where you learn about this dungeon, you prepare for it, you go in, you maybe it's got multiple levels to it, you're, you get your way out of the way to the bottom, you fight the big dungeon boss, and boom, that boss drops the map to Hamlet. And talks about the temple. Or maybe it just talked about the moat house. But in any case, that's how I would do that one. 
Speaking of it more in depth, I would definitely want to revisit the storyline for Temple. I'd want to make it much more in depth with foreshadowing of things to come, with a lot more options to do the different quests, more quests, um, especially in the temple regarding the four sub-temples of earth, air, water, and fire. They were very political. They interacted a lot, or there was implied interaction in the written module. I'd want to have that in the game. Now, improving the storyline and adding such you know, foreshadowing about the, the temple itself would require a lot of better written dialogue than I could do. So if I were to do this remake, I'd have to get very good narrative designers on board to read the original module, talk to me about what my intent was in translating it into the game, and then have them write really good dialogue. Something worthy of the game. Um, some things that like stuck out is like Bernie... Um, Bernie... The magic user and the uh, fighter who had the tower right outside of Hamlet... I wanted way more interaction with them, way more. Maybe they even send you out on, on their own quest. I mean, they're pretty high level and they have their own stuff going on. So in a way of, of putting in a lot more content, that is an obvious way to do it. So you go to Hamlet, basically you can do some quests there and I'd make that place more interesting. But the Druid there should have a lot more quests to give you the temple of Cuthbert there, St. Cuthbert, should have a lot more quests to give you, and that tower, and the Bernie and... Can I remember his other name? Bernie and the other guy. So, speaking of content, though, I would definitely restore all the Nob content that got taken out. And there was a lot. Um, there was an entire brothel, and it had a bunch of quests associated with it, and all that got cut. I would put all that back in. But in addition to that, like I implied with all the additional quest hooks that were possible in Hamlet, I'd want to make a bunch of new maps and have quests that lead to them. You know, other dungeons, not as big as the temple, but other dungeons you could go to. Um, maybe you hear about some magic items that would help you at uh, doing the temple. Maybe you just get treasure maps to other things. Maybe they, the, the big high-level people in... Hamlet have places they want to send you. So I'd want to do all of that. Basically make it a much more realized area. So when you go to the world map, there's a bunch more places you can go. Speaking of the world map, I'd want a bunch more random encounters on that. And random encounters that make a lot more use of our models. Like we had, I think we made a crayf giant crayfish model to use in the boathouse. And it was used in one Riverside encounter. You know, make make a dungeon, make a cave, and put, put them in there. There's a lot of other models we didn't use much. Um, there's a, you know, a Baylor down there. There's, you know, a bunch of elementals. There's just a bunch of creatures that only got used a limited number of time that if we added more map locations and a lot more random encounters, we could make more use of them. Speaking of which, I would increase the level cap on Temple. Now, there was a really good reason we didn't do this in the base game. And it wasn't just because the module was up, only took people up to about level 10. The reason I'd want to increase the level cap, probably to 20, is once you do that, there's two things that happen in D&D. One, a bunch more spells and abilities become usable. And it's really dominated by the additional spells. A lot more wizard spells. A lot more cleric and, and druid spells. Just so many. Um, and those would all have to be coded and put in the game. Could be done. The engine is easily extendable. And some of it's just data, but a lot of it would require specific code and art to support. So it's not a tiny amount of work to up the level cap. Also, once you get the level cap up that high, I mean, we supported uh, uh, multi-classing. I would love the idea of prestige classes and throw that in there. That might be too much for a remake, but I would love to pursue that idea and see just how much work it would be to do it. Basically make this a true D&D 3.5 complete game. 
And then if I've done all the other things, so it's still focused on the temple. So all those other locations and quest lines are side quests, ancillary, things that help build you up to do it. Then I'd make sure that the four elemental planes that are in there are a lot bigger, have a lot richer content, maybe their own quests on those planes. And um, the bottom of the temple where Zaktmoy is. I would like to have that done out a lot better. And since we have already um, that Loth can appear and there's a god that shows up to mess with uh, St. Cuthbert, I'd put all those in, in, in a much more complete way. I realize this is probably taking this game up to being 40, 50, or 60 hours. I don't care. It's a remake. I get to wish for things. But in general, I think I think that's my complete list. So fix bugs, higher resolution, better UI, better longer vignettes, storyline, dialogue, restored nob, con nob content, and a lot of new content, and up the level cap. That's a lot. I don't think it changes the fundamental nature of Temple, but it certainly makes it a lot deeper, richer, and more complete, which is what I would have loved to have shipped the first time, but that was not going to happen on that budget and in that um, schedule. Anyway, that's what I would love to do if I was remaking Temple of Elemental Evil today.